Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. I hope everyone is doing fine. Today I am creating a new playlist called as Deep Learning Projects and in this playlist I will be uploading videos on deep learning use cases and projects where we will use neural networks and I will post videos on the machine learning course which we are working on already. So those videos will be posted regularly and once in a while I will try to uh, make some videos on the deep learning project so that uh, you know it is not monotonous for the viewers to watch and you can also learn uh, you know deep learning on the go. Okay so that's the idea and uh, the first uh, project that we are working on in this deep learning playlist is breast cancer classification with neural network. Okay so if you are uh, following my channel you would have seen uh, the project video in which we have worked on this breast cancer classification classification data set which is basically a numerical data set and in which we have used the logistic regression model in order to classify the data points as benign or uh, malignant so it is the same data set uh, that we will be working on so if you haven't watched that video you can just check this uh, one out and in this we will be uh, using the neural network as i have told you okay so this will be a very simple neural network that we are going to uh, build and uh, if you have never worked on deep learning if you have you know if you don't have any idea on how to create this neural network so this video will be very simple for you to understand and you can also implement this for uh, other numerical data set as well so this is the idea that i wanted to uh, make this video on so that it is easier for the viewers to uh, make their own neural networks for different projects and uh, so as i've told you we'll be working on this breast cancer data set so all these codes you know i've just made some simple data processing techniques that we already uh, done in the previous video of breast cancer classification i'll explain you what are all the things that we are doing here so but you know we won't be including any data analysis stuff and feature engineering steps and all that so we will be including only the uh, basic things so that we can focus mainly on building the neural network and uh so if you want to get a clear understanding about this data and if you want to know how uh, to perform data analysis and all those things you can refer these videos so the first video is basically as i've told you this is where we have used the machine learning model which is basically the logistic regression model where we use that model in order to classify the cancer and the second video will be on the exploratory data analysis on this breast cancer data set so i have provided the link in link in this collab file and uh, then uh, how you can do some data visualization on this particular data set so i have given all these three links I'll also give the link for uh, each of the three videos in the description of this video as well so you can check that out okay so I'll just quickly explain what are all the data processing part that we are doing uh, you know before moving on to the neural network part so first as we know uh, we are just importing the dependencies that we need dependencies in the sense the libraries and the functions that we will need first we are importing the numpy library so numpy is very important because uh, we may need to create some numpy arrays we may need to uh, perform some math uh, on those numpy arrays and so on and for that we are importing the numpy arrays and then we are uh, importing the pandas library so the use of this pandas library is to create a data frame so you can see so this is how our, our, our data set basically looks like in order to uh, you know to get a better view of this data to uh, perform some analysis and processing it is better to load this data to a pandas data frame so data frames are nothing but more structured tables in which we can uh, get a clear idea about our data set so for that we are importing our pandas library and then we are uh, importing the matplotlib.py plot so once we train our uh, neural network so we will visualize how this training has been going on so for that purpose i am importing this matplotlib library and we are importing this sklearn.data set so this is uh, the module so sklearn as a module called as data sets and this particular data sets module has some basic data sets like this breast cancer data set uh, you know house price data set etc and then we are importing the train test split function from sklearn.model selection so that we can split our data into training data and test data so these are all the basic libraries uh, that we need and uh, once we are uh, you know uh, uh, creating a neural network so in that case we will be importing the tensorflow and keras so that we will uh, deal with in the later part of this video okay so, so usually uh, we, you know, use neural networks on uh, image data and, uh, you know, audio data, but there are not much tutorials available on how you can use neural networks for numerical data. So that's why I wanted to create this tutorial. And after this, I'll post videos on uh, how you can use the similar neural network for text data as well as image uh, data as well. So that will be the upcoming videos. For now, let's focus on the numerical data set. So the first step is loading the breast cancer data from sklearn.datasets. So you can see here. So sklearn.datasets is, is what we are importing. And from that I am uh, giving this uh, function called as load breast cancer. And I am storing this data set in a variable called as breast cancer data. So this is basically in the form of a library. Sorry, so uh, it is in the form of a dictionary. 
So I'm printing this uh, breast cancer data set. If you see this dictionary, there is a key called as data. And this particular data contains all the feature values. And there is another, uh, you know, element pair, which is basically the target, uh, which is zero or one, where uh, one target represents benign and the other target represents malignant. So the idea of this data set is, so if we give all these features, the uh, model will tell us whether the particular tumor is benign or malignant. So benign tumors are, are you know localized so these tumors doesn't travel to other parts of the body whereas if the tumor is malignant so then only we call it as cancerous because these tumors have the ability to move to the other parts of the uh, body and and the problem gets serious so this is what we are uh, you know working on in this particular uh, data set where we have to predict whether a particular patient has benign tumor or a malignant tumor so that's the idea and again if you wanted to get a clear understanding and detailed understanding of this particular data set please watch uh, these three videos so that you understand this completely and after that, so you can see the feature name. So these are all, uh, so this is the target name, which is malignant or benign. So one and zero, and we have the feature names. So if I just scroll uh, here, so it will be given us this. Yeah, so you can see the feature name. So feature names are nothing but the names of the columns. You can see mean radius, mean texture, and so on. So these are all the values. So, so the data or the values that is present in this key called as data or the values for the corresponding feature names so we will understand how this comes and all that and yeah so now we are going to load this data which we have loaded to this breast cancer data set into a pandas data frame and uh, for that i'm creating a variable called as data frame so this will be the name of the data frame that we are creating and here i'm using the pandas library and i'm using the function data frame and uh, breast cancer dot data so when i run this it will take all these values so we know that this is the data set that we are working on and when i mentioned breast cancer data set dot data so all these values will be loaded from this to this okay so all these values will be loaded and uh, after that i'm setting columns so columns is nothing but the feature names that we have seen so when i give this feature name so we get all these column names from this particular sklearn data set so next i'm just printing the first five rows of the data frame so that we can get uh, the sample on how this data set looks like so we can see the columns like mean radius mean texture mean perimeter and so on so you can see the column names and uh, if you uh, you know so if we want to check you know the number of columns so you can see here so 30 columns five rows and 30 columns are there so yet basically gives us the first five rows so that's why it is giving this as five and the total number of columns that we have is 30 so that means we have 30 features and now we are going to add the target column to our data set okay so target column is nothing but zero and one which represents a malignant and benign so for that uh, i'm just creating a new column called as label so you can also name this column as class or you can name this as target or anything you want so in this we are loading this target so this target is uh, this one so when i run this this value should be added to my data frame so now what i'm doing is i'm just uh, you know printing the last five rows of the data frame so if i scroll to the last now i can see a new column called as label whereas previously it doesn't contain that particular column so we are just basically uh, adding a new column so the idea here is so if you give all these features so if you give all these features to, to your neural network or to your machine learning model it should predict what is the label so all these things becomes your x and this final column becomes your y so this is the output that we are going to predict and all the other 30 columns will be our input okay so if you want to determine or if you want to check how many rows and columns are there in your data set you can uh, run the function called as shape data frame dot shape so data frame is the name of the data frame that i've created so you can again you can name this as anything you want so when i run the shape i get that there are 569 rows and 31 columns so 569 rows means there are totally there are 569 patients so all these patients the tumors of this patient should be classified as either benign or uh, malignant and 31 columns are there next so data frame dot info so this will basically uh, tell you how many null non, non uh, you know null values are there and what is the data type of the columns that you have so null value means missing values non -val non null values means those values are present right so totally we have 569 entries that means 569 rows so each of this represents the column names so 569 non null values means 569 values are present in the mean radius column so again 569 values are present in the mean texture column so all the values are present in this data set so there are no missing values uh, in this so if we have some missing values we need to process that and all the uh, data types are in the form of float except the label which is in the form of integer which is 0 and 1 and next you can also run this in order to check uh, how many number of missing values are there in each column so 
no this one is uh, similar to so this particular uh, value is similar to this one the only difference is that so this will tell you how many non null values are there that means how many values are present and when you run this data frame dot is null dot sum it will tell you how many missing values are there okay so zero means there are zero missing values in the mean radius and so on so we can see all the values are zero that means no values are missing in any column so that's the idea and then we are uh, checking some statistical measures so this is useful for us when we are doing some uh, some more uh, uh, data analysis on our data set so describe will give me the descriptive statistical measures like count so count is nothing but how many values are there in each column so mean will give me the average value of each column so std is the standard deviation minimum is the minimum value of each column so this is my 25th percentile 50th percentile 75th percentile so 25th percentile means uh, 25 percentage of the values are less than 11.7 .7 in this mean radius column so again it is similar to 50th and 75th percentile and this is the maximum value for each column and 50th percentile is my median value so i hope everyone is uh, clear about these things be because like we have worked uh, on this isnal describe and info on, on several of our projects so i hope everyone is clear so i'm just quickly going through all the codes so if you don't understand this again you can just go to this exploratory data analysis video and breast cancer classification with logistic regression video where i've made a very clear and detailed explanation on all these things so the next thing will be yeah so next we are uh, counting how many values are there for a uh, benign case and malignant case for that i'm using this value count so this is basically to check the distribution of the target variable so we know that there are two target variables which is either zero or one uh, which is you know the sklearn dot data sets target okay so we are checking how many uh, data points have the label as zero and how many data points as the label as one so we can see there are 357 data points with a label one and two 12 values uh, with the label zero so the reason we are checking this is if there is a huge uh, you know imbalance in this uh, distribution we have to uh, process this data so let's say that there are 500 data points for this label one and only 100 data points are there for the label zero so in that case there is a huge imbalance so in that case we will perform methods like up sampling or down sampling so that the distribution is even so this is very important when it comes to uh, you know machine learning so because like if there is imbalance the model you know don't learn well or it won't be trained well so in this case it is not a problem because like the imbalance is not that much high so we can just uh, ignore this particular thing so one means benign and zero means malignant in this case so this is you know you, if you wanted to uh, know how we arrive at this particular uh, information so you can go to the documentation of sklearn.datasets so this sklearn.datasets where uh, in that you can uh, go through this load breast cancer so in that the details will be given or you can go to the uzi machine learning repository of this breast cancer data set where these details will be given so understand that one means benign and zero means malignant and this is what we wanted to classify and then we have another function called as group by so what this group by function does is it will group the data points into these labels and it will give me what is the mean value for each of the labels so just look at this one if you don't understand this so i have label zero and then i have label one for all the data points that has the label zero the mean value for this mean radius is 17.4 and the mean or average value for all the data points with label 0 as an average value of mean text as 21.6 and so on. So this is the mean value for the label 1. So we are uh, grouping all the data points with label 0 and we are grouping all the data points with label 1 and when we are finding what is the average for each of the columns. So the important inference that we can get is, so we know that zero means malignant, which is the most dangerous uh, state and Bannon is not that much dangerous. So the value are kind of more for the label zero, which is malignant. So malignant as for malignant, most of the column values are greater when you compare it to the benign value. So you can see, so it is 17.4 here. This is like 12 something so this is 21 this is 17 and so on so the values are kind of a more for malignant cases so there is a clear distinction so like this is very important for us because it clearly tells us for malignant cases the values are kind of higher so these features are nothing but uh the values that are taken from a test called as fine needle aspiration which is basically a biopsy of the tumor 
<clears throat> where they will collect the sample of this tumor cells from the patient and they will uh, run some test on some microscopes and i'm not uh, exactly sure what is the process but it is taken from this test and these are, are all the cytological value cytological in the sense the uh, uh, measurements of the cells that they are taking for the sampling thing so after that so you know if we are doing some more data exploratory parts so we will uh, probably use some plots and other things in order to get some some more information on the data set again so this is not a data analysis video so this is uh, implementing neural network so let's not go deeper into it so just a second okay so now what we are doing here is we have to split this data into features and target so i'm creating two variables so one variable is x and the other variable is y so x will contain all the columns except the label column and this label column will go to the variable called as y okay so here what I'm doing is, so I'm taking the data frame and I'm, I'm going to drop a column and that column is label. So axis is equal to 1. So this means like whenever you want to drop a column, you will mention axis is equal to 1. And whenever you want to drop a row, you will mention axis is equal to 0. And I'm storing all the label into the variable called as y. So after running this, if I print x and y, so you can see that... Uh, so this, uh, you know, X doesn't contain the last column, which is label. So it will contain the uh, uh, columns from this mean radius all the way up to worst fractal dimension. So it basically contains 30 columns. So you can also see here. So these are all the 30 columns that we add initially. Worst fractal dimension. So we again so we have this label column. So that won't be present in this X. So this, uh, you know, uh, y will contain the label column which is basically my target so the reason we are doing here is whenever we are training our machine learning model or neural network we need to give the features and the target separately so features are nothing but the input that we are giving to the model and based on that input it will predict my target so that's the idea and after this we are splitting our data set into training data and test data for that we will use the function train test split so we have initially imported this function from scalar.model selection and here we are creating four arrays x train x test y train and y test and uh, i'm splitting x and y so these are all the attributes for this train test split function so i'm going to split this x and y into x train x test y train and y test so x train is nothing but training data of all these features and the corresponding labels will be stored in y train and x test is the test data features and all the labels for this test data will be stored in y test okay so x train is the features of training data and the corresponding labels in y train x test is the test features and y test is the labels for those test features and so on and the test size is equal to 0 0.2 that means i want 20 percentage of the data to be my test data and random state is equal to 2 so the reason we are using this random state is if you are using a different random state value, your data will be split in a different way. So if you want your data to be split in the same way as my data is getting split, then we both have to use the same random state. So that's the idea of random state and the only purpose is to get some, uh, you know, reproducible results. So it is not like that much important. So it is just to get some uh, same results whenever we uh, run our code. So we are checking how many data points are there for the training data and test data. So X is my original data set which contains 569 data points and 80% of the data which is 455 goes to my X train and 20% uh, of data which is 114 goes to my X test. Okay. So we have worked on these uh, up to these things before and what we are going to see after this is what is new for you. Okay. So if you haven't worked on deep learning, so this is the part where we will be, you know, creating a simple neural network in order to train this, uh, train this neural network with this breast cancer data. Okay. So now we know that a neural network will contain several layers. So the first layer is my input layer where I will give my features and the final layer is my output layer, you know, where the model will actually predict whether the target is either zero or one. In between, there can be multiple hidden layers. Okay. So there can be one hidden layer, there can be 10 or even 100 hidden layers in a neural network. So we need to uh, develop this particular structure. So we need to uh, create some layers for our input, uh, a single layer for our output and several layers for hidden. So input and output will be one uh, layer and hidden can be multiple layers. So this is what we are going to, uh, you know, work on. And this is the most important part of this video. So for creating this neural network, we are going to use two libraries. One is TensorFlow and the another one is Keras. Okay. So let me just make these text as bold. 
and now let's import the required libraries so this will be importing tensorflow and keras okay so i'm going to import tensorflow as tf so tensorflow library is already installed in google collab so i'm not uh, installing it so if you are working on spider or pycharm you probably have to install this tensorflow library so using pip install or uh, anaconda installation so you can use any one of those so in collab it is already installed so we don't need to worry about it so next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to set a seed so tf dot random dot set seed I'll give a value as three. So I'll explain you why we are doing this. And then we are importing Keras. So from TensorFlow, import Keras. So let's try to understand this TensorFlow and Keras. So TensorFlow is the deep learning library developed by Google. Okay. So there are several functions and, uh, you know, like, we can create neural networks easily by using this uh, library called as TensorFlow. And again, there are several other libraries like PyTorch and Microsoft CNTK, which is basically cognition toolkit. So these libraries are used for creating deep uh, you know, neural networks and so on. And the widely used libraries for deep learning are TensorFlow and uh, PyTorch. So if you think about this Keras, Keras is not a standalone library. So it is just a wrapper of this TensorFlow and Keras. So, you know, uh, like when TensorFlow was uh, released initially, it was hard to make neural networks from TensorFlow because like the coding part is a bit hard. What Keras did is it used TensorFlow as its backend. And uh, after that, the you know, building the neural networks became easy because they have created several APIs and functions so that we can easily build our uh, neural network. So that is the use of this Keras. So you can uh, set your backend to TensorFlow or PyTorch in Keras. So here we will be using TensorFlow. So after a while, TensorFlow included Keras in their library itself. So that's why we are importing Keras from TensorFlow. So you can also import TensorFlow separately and you can specify the backend as Keras but this is you know more easier now coming to this random seed okay so i have set this uh, set seed to three so whenever you are training a neural network in keras so there are several weights and parameters that will be initialized so each time you train your neural network so this as it is a random way of uh, generating the values some of the values may be different uh, so the final uh, outcome is that your accuracy value may change each time you run your neural network so in order to avoid that we set a random seed so if you set this random seed no matter how many times you run your code you will get the same accuracy score so that's the idea of this uh, you know setting this uh, random seed so this is just like uh, you know this random state to just get you know reproducible results so the main thing is we are importing tensorflow and we are setting some random seed and then we are importing this keras from this tensorflow so you should set this random seed as soon as you are importing this tensorflow then only it will work okay so these are all the two libraries that we need tensorflow and keras so i'll run this one and now we are going to build our neural network so cannot import keras from tensorflow okay so there is some uh, error so this should be a, a small letter so it should not be in caps so that's the thing okay so i'm importing tensorflow and keras now i'm going to uh, build this layers input layer reader layer and output layer so i'll create a command here as setting up the layers of my neural network okay so for this i'll just create a variable called as model so in this model only i will uh, you know create my neural network layers and for this i'm going to use keras dot sequential so you probably would have heard about this uh, sequential so this is where we will stack uh, the layers of our neural network so this is a very useful function that is present in this keras so keras dot sequential i'll just create a list here okay so what we are basically doing here is so now we will be setting up the layers for our neural network so keras dot layers okay so keras dot layers dot flatten and in this i'll uh, you know mention my input shape okay so or else i'll just uh, mention the layers first after that we can mention the number of neurons and the parameters for them. next is keras dot layers 
dot dins and uh, finally keras dot layers dot dins and okay so this keras dot layers dot flatten is my first layer of uh, um, network and second i have an hidden layer which is this keras dot layers dot dins okay so this d should be in caps and keras dot layers so the third one is my output layer okay so we are creating one input layer one hidden layer and one output layer okay so dense means all the uh, you know neurons in that particular net uh, layer is connected to all the neurons in the previous layer so if you see this so if you see this neuron alone so we are getting the data from all the other uh, neurons in the input layer so we have three neurons in the input layer so this neuron uh, gives its output to this first one and this second one also gives its input this third neuron also gives input to the uh, this particular neuron so this will be carried on for all the other neurons as well so if you think about this four neurons all the four neurons will get the input from all the three neurons in the previous layer so that that's what you know dense means and uh, flatten so there is an interesting thing about this flatten so whenever we are training our machine learning model we will feed this x train and uh, y train directly to our model right so if you think about this x train it is in the form of a matrix right so this matrix contain 569 rows and 30 columns but whenever you are training a neural network we have to flatten this flatten in the sense we have to convert this into a single dimensional array so this is very important okay so each feature will go to one neuron so if you think about this particular data set so we have 30 features so each feature for each feature we will give one one neuron in the input layer so there is you know, not much function or not much work that has been done in the input layer so this is just you know used to uh, pass the value to the next hidden layer so the number of input uh, sorry the number of neurons in your input layer is uh, equal to the number of uh, features that you have in your data set so this is like specific for numerical uh, data set alone for image data this is like slightly kind of different so we will deal that with you know deal that at a later time but uh, again i hope that you understand the purpose of this flatten is to convert the data into a single dimensional array and here i need to mention the input shape so in this input shape mention the number of columns that are there in your data okay so 30 comma so this is how you need to mention so if there are 10 uh, columns or 10 features in your data then you have to mention 30 and the important thing is that this doesn't contain the output which is my uh, target so this is the number of features allowed so input chip is equal to 30 so the this particular flatten layer will flatten our data and it will convert it into a single dimensional array and the next one is my hidden layer so in this hidden layer let's say i want 20 neurons okay and the next important thing that we need to mention is the activation function so activation is equal to relu so relu stands for rectified linear units and finally my output layer so in my output layer i'm going to have two neurons and here the activation function is equal to sigmoid so sigmoid is just like the logistic regression function that we have okay so in this uh hidden layer i have mentioned 20 neurons so in this image we have four neurons in the hidden layer so we have one hidden layer we have uh, four uh, uh, neurons so in this case i am mentioning 20 neurons so you can uh, give different uh, number of neurons and you can check how the model is working so in this case i am just giving 20 neurons and the activation function is ready whereas in the output layer i am giving the number of neurons is two so this is like very specific you should not give any other values the reason is the number of neurons that you are given and giving in this output layer is equal to the number of classes that you have so if you just go through this data we have two classes one class is zero and the other class is one right so the number of uh, I, i'm just repeating this again so the number of neurons in the output layer is equal to the number of classes that you have if you have three different cl classes in that case you will be uh, creating you know this number will be changed to three sorry so this will be changed to three if you have 10 uh, you know classes uh, in that case we have to convert this to 10 and so on so in this case there are two classes hence we are creating this two two so this is like very important for us so what happens is let's say that uh, this is uh, the two neurons that we are creating so let's say that when the output uh, is zero this will give us uh, the signal as one so when the output is one this will give us the one so like 
a specific neuron will fire for each label okay so i'll just uh, take an example so let's say that uh, the output that our model is predicting is zero so zero basically means malignant right so if i go there okay so zero means malignant so this uh, particular neuron so this particular neuron will give me the output so this will be blank when my output is one that means benign right then this neuron will give me the output so that is the idea so this is what we call as firing of neurons and uh, when one uh, neuron is firing the other neuron won't be active so act like firing in the sense the output will be one so that is the idea so we that's why we are creating two neurons in the output layer which is equal to the number of classes that we have so we are creating this flatten flatten array or this flatten layer in order to convert our data into a single dimensional array and then we are creating a hidden layer with 20 neurons and finally we are creating the output layer with two, two neurons as we have two classes so this is my model and i'm stacking all these layers using the sequential function from keras so i'll run this the next step is we have to compile this array okay so i have to put a comma here so i miss this one okay so let's run this so this will create my uh, create the structure for this uh, neural network now we have to compile this neural network with some factors okay so this is a very simple neural network as i have told you so this is a very simple data set so it will this particular uh, network will work fine so if your data set is complex and uh, in that case we probably have to add several neurons and several layers to our uh, neural network so if you want to add another layer so what you will basically do is you will again add keras.layers.dense and uh, so i'll just copy this one so you will just put this one so keras.layers.dense mm, 20 neurons uh, really right so i will just add this here and uh, i can just change this neurons to maybe 30 or 40 or whatever it is and i can just change this relu to you know sigmoid so now this particular neural network has two hidden layers so this is how you can add a new layers to your neural network and again there are several activation functions like uh, sigmoid rectify linear uh, units which is my relu and there is uh, other uh, activation functions called as leaky relu and so on so we will discuss the theoretical part and how these things work on all those things in the deep learning course so this video is purely for implementation part so uh, understand that for each layer and for and for each uh, neuron we have to mention the activation relu so it is not that we have activation function for the entire layer so it is not that so each neuron will have an activation function okay so when i mentioned relu all the 20 neurons in the hidden layer will have the activation factor uh, activation function as relu and when i mentioned sigmoid all the uh, neurons in the output layer will have the activation function as sigmoid so that's the idea so after this we have to compile our neural network with factors like uh, optimizers loss uh, etc okay so this part will be compiling the neural network okay so for this i'm going to use model.compile model.compile and this model is nothing but the keras.sequential that we have built so in this uh, i'm going to mention my optimizer so first one is my optimizer so here i'm going to use my adam optimizer and the loss that i am mentioning here is sparse categorical cross entropy sparse categorical cross entropy okay so this is the loss and finally i am going to use the matrix as accuracy okay So this is my accuracy okay so this is compiling part so we are setting the optimizer to add a optimizer loss function as sparse categorical cross entropy and matrix as accuracy so again there are several optimizers and several loss functions that we have so you can again do some research on uh, what is meant by this adam what is meant by this sparse categorical cross entropy and so on so i'll explain all these things while we are working on our deep learning course so please do some research on this part i'll just give you one idea so whenever you are uh, you know using the target 
variable as 0 1 2 3 and so on in that case we have to use sparse categorical cross entropy and when you have one not encoded labels in that case we will use categorical cross entropy so we won't use sparse so one not encoding in the sense let's say that there are three objects okay so let's say that we want to build a neural network that will uh, predict whether an image represents a dog or a cat or a horse so let's say that we are labeling this dog to 0 and we are labeling cat to 1 and we are labeling ors to 3 sorry 2 so these are all the three labels that we have 0 1 and 2 so whenever you are using the target variable as this kind of integer labels so in that case you will use uh, the sparse categorical cross entropy as your loss function whereas if you use one art encoding so one not encoding will look like is so just create a text cell here okay So if it is a dog, I will mention it as 1, 0, 0. If it is a cat, I will mention it as 0, 1 and 0. If it is a horse, I will mention it as 0, 0 and 1. So this is what is called as one odd encoding. Okay, so you can see if it is if it is dog, the first value should be 1. If it is cat, the second value should be 1 and the other value should be 0. If it is horse, the third value should be 1. So this is what we call as one odd encoding of labels. So if we have, uh, you know, multiple labels, when there are uh, like, you know, 10 labels or uh, 20 labels, in that case, we probably will go with one not encoding. Whereas in this case, we just have two labels, right? So benign and malignant. So we can just go with this numerical kind of encoding called as label encoding. So whenever you are going with this uh, normal label encoding with the 0, 1 and 2 as your label, we will be using sparse categorical cross entropy. And when we are using this one not encoded labels, in that case, we will just use this sparse categorical cross entropy. So this is like two kinds of loss functions. Similarly, there are other loss functions as well. So you can just go to the Keras documentation of this uh, loss function and you can do the research on it. So you will get some idea. So this is the compiling part of this uh, model. So I'll just run this one. So we are uh, creating uh, input layer, output layer and one hidden layer. And uh, we are using the Adam optimizer and uh, sparse categorical cross entropy as the loss function. And the metrics used is accuracy. Now we need to train our model. So this part is training the neural network. Okay, so it is just similar to machine learning. So in machine learning, we use this model dot fit, right? So similarly, we will use this model. So model is my neural network that I'm building. So model dot fit, X train and Y train. And I'll set my validation split to 0 0.1 and epox is equal to 10. Okay. So we are feeding my, uh, you know, we're feeding this X train, Y train, validation split and epoch. So validation is just like the train test split we are doing on. So while the model is uh, training, it will uh, do the testing on this validation itself. So it is just like, uh, you know, train test split. So we have X train, Y train, validation split as 10% uh, of the data, and epochs is equal to 10. Epochs is like how many times your model has to go through the data. So that is just epochs. So X train is my uh, features and Y train is my uh, labels. Okay. So which we have splitted from this X train, this uh, train test split function and so on. So when I run this, this will train my neural network and I will see what is the loss at uh, each epoch and what is the accuracy at each epoch. And before doing this, I'm going to create uh, another variable called as history is equal to model dot fit. The reason is so we will be plotting uh, the loss value and accuracy value while the training has been going on. And for that, we generally, you know, use this variable name called as history. So this is just like the convention that we use while training the neural network. So I'll run this. So this model will be uh, run for 10 times, which is the 10 epoch. So there is some error that I'm getting here. So let me just go through it user code unknown loss functions okay so i just made a spelling mistake here so it's sparse okay so i'll uh, set my model dot sequential again i'll compile this and let's train our model again i'm getting an uh, error so unknown metric function called as accuracy okay so i'm just making several mistakes today so accuracy 
I hope everything is fine now. Let's see. Yeah, now our model is training. So when the model is uh, running for the first time, the loss function that we are getting is 23, which is a very huge loss function. And the accuracy on training data is 0 0.22 and the validation loss function is 20 and this is the validation accuracy so we have training data loss training data accuracy and this is the validation loss validation accuracy so if you see this we have 10 epochs and at each epoch the loss function is decreasing and the accuracy score is increasing right so we have started from 22.7 percentage accuracy accuracy to 78.73 percentage accuracy now when we use a logistic regression model for this particular data set, the accuracy is kind of more than 90 percentage, whereas in this case, we are getting 78 percentage accuracy only. And the validation accuracy is 86.9. So this is like pretty less for neural network model, right? The reason is we haven't standardized our data, okay? So if you see this, the data will be in, in different ranges. We don't apply, you know, we didn't apply the standard scalar function. And that is the reason why we are getting this low accuracy. And now I'm going to apply uh, the standard scalar uh, function to my uh, data. Okay. So that should be done after splitting our data to training data and test data. Okay. So this is very important. So we should not do this before splitting into training data and test data. So like uh, I've seen like few people have asked me that uh, even if I standardize the data and uh, even if I don't standardize the data, the accuracy is kind of similar in some machine learning model. So I've mentioned that in some cases this will be a huge difference so in this case now we will see that uh, you know first time that if we apply this standard scalar function the value will increase the accuracy value will increase so this part of the code will be to standardize the data so we have done this before actually okay so standardize the data and for this we'll be using the function standard scalar which is in sklearn dot pre-processing pre-processing I'm going to import standard scalar okay standard scalar now I'm going to create a variable called a scalar and this is where I will load the instant of this standard scalar function and i'm creating a variable called as x train standard which is equal to scalar dot fit transform so this is very important so i'll just explain you after doing this so fit uh, underscore transform x train and after this we will create a new variable called as x test standard so this is the standardized training data and this is the standardized test data is equal to scalar dot transform x test okay so let's try to understand what we are doing here so we are loading the standard scalar function now we have to fit our data which is our training data to this uh, x train and then we have to transform it okay so instead of like doing this the, I, i'll just do this in this form okay so it is actually the same but you will understand this better so x train standard okay let me just put it together as well so fit transform okay so what basically we are doing here is once we load the standard scalar function we have to fit this uh, model to the standard scalar which is named the scalar and then we have to transform our data so we are fitting the data to our x train and then we are transforming this data and we are storing this in x train and we are you know based on this scaling we have to transform our x test data so the main thing that you need to remember here is you should not fit your data to your test data so that is wrong you have to fit it to your training data alone okay so we are uh, fitting and transforming the data of the training data and then we are using the same scalar to transform our x data so this is how it works now i'll uh, run this one now you can print this x train standard if you want to and you can just see how this data is looking like so i'm just printing x train standard okay so there is no reason like there is no uh, you know uh, requirement to transform y train and y test because it is already in the form of zero and one so we don't have to do that on that one because it is a categorical variable so i'll just print this x train standard 
now all the values will be in the form of similar ranges so which is what we need so i'll just remove this one now in while training our model instead of giving this x train and uh, x train and y train we will give this x train standardized uh, data so that will give us better results so i'll run this model is equal to keras dot sequential again so my uh, model will be set up and uh, i'm compiling my model and while fitting instead of using this x train i'm, I'm going to use this x train standard let's see whether there is any change in the uh, accuracy score so you can see the accuracy starts from 0 0.22 which is 22 percentage all the way up to 78 percentage now we are uh, training with uh, training it with the standardized uh, data now so previously the starting accuracy was 22 percentage now we are getting the starting accuracy is 44 percentage and the accuracy increases up to 95.8 percentage so you can if you want you can just increase this epochs or you can increase the number of neurons and you can also add uh, another layer to your neural net so you can just basically play with so i've just created a simple uh, neural network with one, one internal layer so you can basically increase the neurons and increase the layers but just make sure the model doesn't overfit so that is a problem which we will discuss later but yeah so you can also set this epochs to 20 where the model will go through the data 20 different times so here again you can see the loss function starts from 0 0.76 whereas previously it starts from 20 so loss function is basically what is the difference between your true value and your predicted value so this difference should be minimum so while training any machine learning model or deep learning model our goal is to reduce the loss value and increase the accuracy value so if loss value increases the accuracy value will decrease if the loss value decreases, accuracy value will increase so they are like inversely proportional so you can see the loss value kind of decreases at each epoch and the accuracy value increases at each epoch so this is the validation loss and the validation accuracy so this is how you can train your neural network model and uh, the other standard thing that we usually do is visualize how this loss function changes loss function value changes and the accuracy value changes so for that we will just create some basic plots so i'll create a text here as visualizing accuracy and loss okay so plt which is my matplotlib library that we have imported in the uh, first cell so plt dot plot history dot s3 uh, here i have to mention accuracy okay so my accuracy and then plt dot history let me just copy this so we will uh, visualize this loss and accuracy uh, loss, uh, loss accuracy and validation loss and validation accuracy so i'll put this one so here i'll just change this to validation accuracy so i'll just explain you after completing this part of the code and then we are giving a title to our uh, plot so let's name this plot as plt dot title let's name this as model accuracy model here is the neural network accuracy okay so model accuracy will be the name of the plot and uh, plt dot y label so the name of the y axis will be again so let's call this as accuracy and plt dot x label it will be epochs okay and we are going to set legend for this plot so plt dot legend and uh, this legend will be train well so well basically stands for validation and where do you want this location is lower right so i'll put this as training data and this as validation data okay so i hope everything is fine so history is nothing but so this is why we have stored all the checkpoints of the model so history dot history accuracy so let's run this you will understand what we are doing here so what it basically do is it will take this model's accuracy so this is the accuracy on the training data this is the accuracy on the test data so it will take each of these values and it will try to plot it 
okay so we have we have the uh, epoch number so this is uh, when the model runs for the first epoch second epoch third epoch fourth epoch and so on so totally we had 10 epochs so like in the first epoch if you see the loss value is 0.7 so if you see sorry we have to look at the accuracy so accuracy is 44 almost it's 45 percentage or something like that for first epochs it is somewhere here the accuracy is uh, you know accuracy is I think we have to look here okay so let me just uh, check it for this second one okay second one the accuracy is 0 0.78 so it's 78 percentage 78 so I think it's it's kind of different so training and validation so let me just recheck it epox is straight okay so the thing is the first epoch has been numbered as zero second epoch has been numbered as one so two and three so so you you will have epochs from zero to nine which counts for a uh, ten epochs okay so for the first epoch so this is represented this particular epoch is represented as zero and for this the accuracy is 0 0.44 percentage which is 44 percentage so if you see here we have the value at, at this point which is 44 percentage and this is uh basically the you know third epoch because like 0 1 and 2 so for this we have to look at the third one third epoch is about 89 percentage so if you see here the training data accuracy is almost here which is equal to 89 percentage so e epochs are from 0 1 2 3 and so on so this is the basic numbering in python so just yeah okay so that is the thing so blue color uh, line this blue color curve tells me how my training data accuracy changes so it changes from 44 percentage to uh, 95 percentage and this orange colored line tell me what is uh, you know how is my validation accuracy changes 0 0.71 0 0.95 and so on so this is just basically how my accuracy changes so it starts from a very low accuracy of 44 percentage and, and it kind of uh, getting and after a point it kind of reaches a plateau because like uh, it reaches 91 percentage and 93 percentage in the fifth epoch itself so uh, in the next 10 epochs it, it goes to 95 percentage so the maximum accuracy we have is about 100 percentage which will be in the form of 1.0 now uh, this is what we are creating so when I mention this history dot history accuracy so this value will be taken and when I mention validation accuracy this one will be taken and we are just naming the uh, plot which is model accuracy and we are creating uh, the y label as accuracy x label as epoch so we are just plotting uh, for epochs and accuracy and the legend so I, I just wanted to mention that this blue colored curve represents the training done on the training data and orange color is this validation data and location so if you if you change this location to uh, you know upper right or upper left this location will be changed here or here based on your value so this is the plot we are uh, doing and and we also used to do this for the loss value as well so i'll just copy this code so it will remain the same we just need to change this to loss and this will be validation loss and let's name this as uh, yeah so model loss and this is loss value okay so training data test data so here let me put it on upper right corner so you will change the you will see the change in the location yeah so if you see the first epoch which is zero the loss function value is 0 0.76 right so if you see here zero the training data loss function is 0 0.7 and so on it kind of uh, decreases so on so the accuracy starts from a low point and it increases and the accuracy kind of decreases which we are more interested in okay so the final accuracy that we are getting is uh, for training data it's 0 0.15 and for validation data is 0 0.12 so which is at this point okay so this is how we will visualize how the loss function and uh, uh, loss function value and accuracy value changes so this is how we can visualize this and now we can also do some certain things so the next we, we just have two more works to do one is to uh you know test our uh, a neural network on the test data that we have created so we have done all these things on the training data but then we have to do this for this test data that we have created which is this x test which we have standardized to x test standard okay so after that we'll be building a predictive system so let me do those as well so this part of the code will be to get the accuracy value accuracy of the model on test data okay for this i'm going to create two variables for this loss and accuracy so there is a, a function in this keras sequential this keras model which is called as evaluate so model which is my neural network dot evaluate 
here i have to give my uh, x test data and the corresponding labels x test standardized so this is just like uh, predicting the accuracy score of the model which we used to do for uh, machine learning case okay so what happens here is so we will feed this x test standardized so the neural network will predict the label for all this test data and it will compare it with this y test which is my true data okay so this is just like the uh, uh, calculating accuracy score so we don't have to do all those things we can just uh, use this evaluate function the model does does it by itself so i just repeat this so the model will take the uh, standardized x test data which is my testing data it will predict the labels and those labels will be compared with my true labels for this y test and it will give me two values one is the loss value and the another one is the accuracy value and let me print the accuracy value alone print accuracy okay okay again i'm making a mistake okay so accuracy let's see so here the loss function value is about 0.16 and the accuracy is 0.938 which basically is 93.8 so we are almost getting a test data accuracy of 94 percentage which is very high so if you increase the epochs or if you increase the lace we probably get some increased uh, accuracy so you can check that out but it is not like that much important for us now what we are going to do is the most interesting part which is to build a predictive system based on this neural network so this is just like this is you know slightly different from how we used to do for machine learning uh, model so there is like few steps that we need to include so here what i'll do is um, i'll just print x test standard dot shape and I'll print the first value of this x-test standard. Print the x-test standard. When I mention zero, this is the first data point in this test data. Okay. So there are 114 test data points, and then we know that there are 30 columns, right? We have printed this here. So 20 percentage of the original data for sorry, 114 goes to the test data and 30 values. The difference is that this data has been standardized here. So now we have 114 data points and 30 columns and this is my first data so see, like, like this there are 114 data points are there now when I use a predict function in this model so we are just basically working on classification right so I'll create a variable called as ypred and in this ypred I'm going to use model.predict model.predict x test standard so when I run this in a machine learning, it will give me either zero or one, right? It will predict the class, whether it is, you know, if it is benign, it will give me uh, one. If it is uh, malignant, it will give me the zero. So I will get, get those classes alone as zero or one. But in this case, it is slightly different. Let's see what we are getting. So I'm going to print ypred shape dot shape. So this will basically calculate or this will find the label for all the data points. So ypred.shape and print ypred0. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Now, so what we expect is similar to machine learning. If I run this, it will give me either 0 or 1, but it is kind of different here. So it is giving me two values for one data point okay so this is the prediction for prediction of this x test sorry uh, you know this x test standardized zero for the first data point i'm not getting the label value as zero and one but i'm getting some value like this let's try to understand what is this so when you run this predict function it will give me what is the probability that the label is zero and this value represents what is the probability that the value is one okay so in other words this is the probability of that this particular data point being zero which is like 0 0.24 and this is the probability of this data point being one so in in other terms we can say that the model is 24 percentage sure that this data point represents malignant data and but it is 53 percentage sure that this particular data point is benign data okay so the first value represents the uh, probability of label zero and the second data point represents the label one so this is very very important so it won't give you as either zero or one but it will give you the probability so we will basically choose like if, if the first value is maximum then that label will be zero if the second label like the second value is maximum we will choose this one as uh, one okay so let me let me just print this y shape 
wipe print shape or okay so i'll just print all these things so print wipe print mm, okay so here we will print the x test standard okay so this is the test data and this is the values predicted by my model which is you know stored here so model dot predict x test oh, so this i'm just printing my test data which contain 114 data points so there are like 114 data points here and then i am printing my y print let's try to understand this so this will basically contain 114 different values and for each value you will have two two things okay so we just have to compare the first one and second value so this is for the sub first data point this is for the second data point and this is for the third data point and so on so similarly we have the two values for each of the data point so if the first value is maximum we will tell the label as zero if the second value is maximum we will tell the label as one so for this one if you compare the label value is maximum for this one so we will tell this is the maximum one for this this is the maximum one and so on so this is instead of giving us labels it will give us what is the probability that this data point can be zero and what is the probability that this label can be one and so on okay so this is how it works and we need to convert this to labels so we don't want this probability value but we want uh, you know label values and for that we will be using uh, np.argmax so there is a function in numpy library called as argmax so we'll be using that so i'll just put this uh, thing here as model dot predict gives me so it gives the prediction probability probability of each class for that data point okay so if i consider the first data point for this uh, yeah so this is my first data point and model tells that this for this first data point there is like 2.4 like 0.24 probability that it will be 0 and uh, 0.53 probability that it will be 1 so it will choose the maximum one so if the second value is maximum it will choose as one in this case second value is maximum so we will get the label as one and another important thing that you need to note here is it is not that if you add uh, these two things you will get the value as 100 so it is not like that okay so it is not like if you add these two you will get one so it is not like that it is just some you can think this about some confidence value of the model so which value is higher we will take that particular label so we have to determine this okay so i will just uh, create a text here as converting the prediction probability to class labels okay so to either zero or one which is like more uh, you know we can understand that better right so i'll create a text here as y red labels so we are just converting these values to labels is equal to np.argmax so we are going to use a, a, a for loop so np.argmax of i or i in y red So let's try to understand how this uh, argmax argmax you know works so i'll just create a so you know let me just put it here okay so argmax function so let's try to understand this first and then move on to that part so i'll create a list as my list so this list contains the values as 10 20 and 30 okay and i'm going to say um, let's say that i want to find the index of the maximum label so index of maximum value index of max value is equal to np.argmax of my list and i'm going to print my list as well as and I'm going to print the index of maximum value. Now let's see what is the output that we are getting. 2. So we know that the index of 10 is 0, index of 20 is 1, index of 30 is 2, right? So np.argmax will try to find what is the index of the maximum value. So in this the maximum value is 30 
and the index of this maximum value is 2, right? So that's why we have the 0, 1, 2, the maximum value is present in 30. If we say that I have 30 year, 10 year, and 20 year, now the argmax value should give me the value as 0, right? Let's see. So it is giving me the value as 0. So this is how this works. So if I say that in my list, the values are 0 0.56 and there is another value as 0 point you know 25 so it should give me this particular value as 0 right let's run this so it has given me the value as 0 so I'll, let me just reach you know uh, just put this here so yeah okay i'll put this here now we can see so this is how this basically works so we will take each of this uh, list and we will try to find whether the first value is maximum or the second value is maximum if the first value is maximum i want to give the label as zero if the second value is maximum i want to give the label as one so this is just very simple very basic so that is what we are doing here so i'm creating this white bread lip so here we have just uh, done this for one single list whereas in this we are going to create a for loop where this for loop will iterate over all these lists okay so uh, each of this represents one test data point so totally we have 114 data points so all these values will be converted into 0 or 1 depending on which value is maximum so that's why we have this for i in y print so when this for loop runs for the first time it will take the first value and it will apply this argmax to determine which value is maximum for the second time the for loop runs it will take this value and the argmax will be run and so on so this is what is done and all these labels will be stored in this list called as y pred labels because you can see we are creating this uh, square bracket which basically represents my list and after this i'll print my y pred labels y pred labels is what we are creating here okay so let's run this so this is the value we are getting so if you just print this uh, so if you just compare this y pred and y pred labels for the first value the for this first data point the second value is maximum right so the label should be one you can check this one so label is one again uh, so one means second value is maximum second value maximum zero means first value is maximum and so on so this is how we can convert this probability prediction property to class labels and uh, in machine learning our model directly you know give this kind of uh, values because we have classification from uh, model separately but in neural networks we can do this one in order to convert our labels so this is why the prediction you know building the prediction predictive system changes because we have to incorporate this as well so this part will be building the predictive system okay building the predictive system and uh, for this we have to create the input data input data is equal to some people so in this we need to give the feature values so you know these 30 values if you give this 30 values you will get some result and uh, Next thing is we have to change this to numpy array so that we can reshape this array and so on. So input data. So I have to include an underscore here. Input data. Next step is change the input data which is form of a tuple. So you can also create this as a list so that is not a problem. So we have to change the input data to a numpy array. Okay. And uh, input data has numpy array is equal to np dot as array np dot as array okay so as array input data okay so this will change this tuple which is in this uh, you know brackets to a uh, numpy array and after this we have to reshape the array so reshape the numpy array as we are predicting for one data point okay so the reason is while training our model we have fed it with uh, you know almost 500 data points but we have to tell that model 
I'm just predicting the label for only one data point. So that's why we have to reshape this data point. So it will be given as input data. So let's create uh, this name as input data reshape is equal to mention this array which we have converted dot reshape function. So reshape we have to mention one comma minus one okay so this is the reshape that we do in order to tell the model that i am predicting the label for only one data point and after that we have to standardize the data so don't forget that here we have before training the model before training our neural network we have standardized the data using the standard scalar function right so using the same scalar which we have fitted with our x train we have to transform this data okay so once we transform this data input data reshaped input data uh, reshaped uh, reshape, and standardizing the data standardizing the input data so i will call this as input data so if you do this without standardizing the data it won't work okay so this is like very very important and this order is also important first you have to uh, convert it to numpy array after that you have to reshape it after that only you have to standardize it so if you apply the standard scalar before this reshaping it won't work so scalar dot transform here you should not fit it you have to transform it because like we have to fit it only with the training data so scalar dot transform input data standard scalar dot transform input data reshape okay and finally prediction prediction is equal to model dot predict so please remember that this predict will give us a prediction property and not classes as either zero or one so model dot predict input data standard so i'm putting it here and then let's also print this one to see in prediction and uh, finally prediction label so this is in the form of a probability value so we have to again apply this mp dot arg max in order to convert this probability value into a uh, class as either uh, you know zero or one so i'll create this as a list called np dot arg max arc max of prediction okay so it is the same step that we are doing so in this case we have done this for all the data points but we are just doing this for only one data point so that's why we are not including this for loop and uh, i'll print this as well so let's print this prediction label as well okay so that is done so that is all we need and then we can just include a simple if loop that we used to do so if this prediction label so if prediction label uh, zero, which means the first element, so it will be basically in the form of list. So if this uh, element is equal to zero, in that case, we have to say that the breast cancer is, you know, we can say that the tumor is malignant. Whereas else, else means the label will be one. So we know that uh, one means it is mal sorry, it is benign, right? So print the tumor is benign. Okay, so we are using the trained uh, neural network in order to we are doing this uh, if you want to predict the value for a new data point. Okay, so if the label is zero, then it will say that uh, that particular tumor is malignant. If the label is one, it will tell that it is uh, benign. So there is like nothing to worry and so on. Okay, so now we have to put some value to this input data and we have to, uh, you know predict whether it is it is uh, malign or malignant so i just take one data okay so let me go to the csv file that i have so this is the data that is downloaded from the kaggle so it is the same breast cancer data set i'll open this with notepad okay so you can see so m means it is a ma malignant data point and uh, you can see b so b means a benign data point so I'm going to copy one uh, malignant value. So if I put this, the model should say that it is a malignant tumor. So I'll copy this. Let's put that there. So, so this should be pasted in input data. So it should tell that it is a malignant tumor. Okay. 
So let's run this and see whether our model is predicting correctly. Okay, so it is saying that the tumor is malignant. So now you can see, so this prediction, so this is nothing but the prediction that we have printed here. So it is saying that it has two values, which is 0 0.67 and another one is 0 0.16. So if the first value is maximum, we have to say that the label is zero, right? So hence why it is given zero. So this zero is derived from this np.argmax, okay? And as the label is zero, it will say that it is malignant. And now let's do the same for benign cases. So I'll go and co randomly copy some value. So this is a banan case. You can see the B here. So I'll copy this data point, which is the 30 values. And let me put, now it has to say that uh, the label is one. The second value is maximum. It should say the tumor is banan, right? So I'll put this here. And let's run this. Now you can see the second value is maximum 98 and the first value is minimum, which is 42. And we are getting the label as one and the tumor is banan. So this is how you can build a predictive system uh, using this uh, neural network. So the only difference is that you have to use this np.argmax and you have to scale this before, like scale this after reshaping. So I hope everything is clear now. I'll just give you a quick recap of what we have done so that uh, you just you just get the whole idea. So we are just importing the necessary dependencies that we need. So the libraries like NumPy, Pandas, SKLearn, etc. So Matplotlib for uh, plotting the loss function, the accuracy function. And we are loading the data from this, uh, you know, sklearn.datasets. So after that, we are creating a data frame where we are adding all the data from this uh, dictionary, which like in this dictionary called as uh, breast cancer data set. And in that, we are getting this data alone, which is the feature values. After that, we are adding the target column and we are naming the target column as label okay so now if you see the last there is a last column added called as label which is my target column and you can print the shape which is 569 rows and 31 columns and then we are checking the info as um, whether there are any missing values there are any null values and so on and after that we are just uh, you know printing this description so these are just data analysis part we are checking the you know, distribution of the classes how many one values are there and how many zero values are there and then we are grouping the data points based on their labels. Next is separating the data into features and target to this X and Y. After that, we have splitted our data into training data and test data using the strain test split. So 20, 80% of the data, which is 455, goes to my uh, X train and 20%, 114, goes to my X test. After that, we are using the standard scalar. So this is like very, very important in deep learning. So we have seen that if you don't standardize your data, you will get less accuracy and if you standardize your data you will get better and higher accuracy so that's the idea and here we are building a very simple neural network so there is like a lot of things that we have to explore and i will do that in you know while taking the deep learning course you can also do some research on this so we are importing this tensor flow and we are setting the seed so that we get constant results every time we uh, train our neural network so model we are using this keras dot sequential where we are stacking all the layers so we have flattened layer in order to convert all the data which is in the form of a matrix to a single uh, dimensional array and after that we are uh, creating an inter layer and output layer with two neurons you can try this with different so you can just you know give the activation as sigmoid for both the things or you can give activation as value so you can just interchange you can do some explorations on that part and also check what are all the different activation functions are there so you will find all these details in keras documentation just you know search as keras activation function or keras uh, you know uh, optimizer loss and so on so we have uh, adam optimizer since we have the labels as zero and one we have used a sparse categorical cross entropy if we have one not encoded uh, labels in that case we have to use categorical cross entropy and the metrics so you uh, as we are choosing the metrics here, we are getting the accuracy. So we are getting the accuracy here. So if you choose different metrics, you will get different accuracy here and so on. So here we are creating a variable called a history so that it, you know, it saves all the checkpoints of the training. So we are uh, using this fit function to train our standardized training data. And with, you know, along with the labels and we are setting up the validation split. So how many validation uh, data points are there and setting the epochs, how many times the data has to, uh, you know, the model has to go through the data. And you can see, so uh, at each epoch, the loss is decreasing and the accuracy is increasing, which is uh, what we need. And then we are visualizing how the accuracy and loss changes. So we have epoch 0 to 9. So 0 means the first epoch, 9 means the 10th epoch and so on. Again, we are seeing the loss function value. So the accuracy starts from a low point and it reaches a higher value. And loss function starts from a larger value and reaches a small value. And then we are finding the uh, accuracy on the test data as 90, almost 94 percentage. And uh, the main thing is, we can see that when we use this predict function, it, instead of giving us the labels, it will give us the prediction probability. And we have to use this np dot 
our max in order to find which is the maximum value and we are create you know we are just converting it to list and after that the important thing is building this predictive system where we have to take the value we have to reshape it after that uh, you know so, so first is taking the input data converting it to numpy array and after that reshaping this numpy array then we have to standardize this data and then predicting whether uh, that particular you know uh, the predict value which is my probability and in that we have to you know use the uh, np.argmax function and find the label here we are getting the label as one and finally we can say that if this label is zero we have to print it as malignant if the label is one we have to print as malignant so that is what we have done so this is a very very simple neural network so there is a lot of things that we can do with this so what you can do is so try you know adding the layers and you can also see there is a chance that this model will overfit. Overfit is the thing when your uh, training data accuracy is high, like 95%, but your test data accuracy will be low, like 50% or 60%, and that is what is called as overfitting. So if you add more number of layers, there is a chance that your neural network may overfit. So you can explore, explore that part, and you can also explore what are all the different, you know, optimizers and uh, loss functions that you have. So these are all the uh, two things that you can explore. I just wanted you to, you to explore and, and in the upcoming videos I'll post a video on uh, how image processing works in deep learning. So how we are converting this image to numerical value so that I'll create a separate video and after that we will work on few um, you know image data sets. So image recognition problems using deep learning and after that uh, you know I'll just continue with the machine learning videos. The machine learning course videos are there and once in a while I'll upload deep learning projects like this. I hope you have uh, understand this uh, particular video so like watching this video is not enough please please uh, try to write all these code by yourself at least just keep this code aside just uh, try to write all this code by yourself so then only you will get a clear idea and you can just use this as a template and you can uh, you know work on different numerical projects and so in, in our uh, uh, you know channel itself so i have worked on several classification problems with numerical data so for those uh, data sets you can apply this neural network and see uh, what is the result you are getting so that will be a good exercise so please practice all the codes so just watching the video won't help okay so i hope everyone is happy with this video and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching